Alright guys, so we are going to have a little bit of a different video today. Um, and something that I really have not talked about on this channel much, if at all, is that um, I do still have a career path that I am going after and YouTube isn't my only game in town. So I am actually going to college for IT. For those of you guys who don't know, it's basically information technology, which is one of the main tech careers that one can get into um, in college and in general. A lot of people even argue that you don't need college whatsoever for an IT degree and an IT career. And while I didn't do that personally, that is definitely a viable option. And one of the best ways to propel yourself in the field of IT is by getting certifications. Now, there is probably hundreds of thousands of different certifications, whether it be Microsoft Cloud certifications, Google Services certifications, and then regular like Network Plus, Security Plus, A Plus, and the standard just generalized IT certifications, whatever it may be, there is a ton of different resources online that can help you propel your IT career forward just from your, the comfort of your own home, which is one of the best things about IT overall. So today, as the title and thumbnail of the video suggests, I'm going to be going over how to get your MS900 Microsoft Learning Certification. This is oftentimes referred to as the very first Microsoft certification that one can get. And a lot of IT jobs nowadays have ported over from Linux and the Linux area to Microsoft and Windows and like the command prompt that Windows has to offer Outlook 365 and all that good stuff. So for those of you guys who don't know anything about IT, um, definitely stay tuned because I'm going to go over some basics for passing just any IT um, certification. Um, and then I'm gonna go over this particular MS-900 one and how to pass this one with flying colors. So um, let's jump straight into it. First of all, in order to schedule an exam, you have to go on the Microsoft Learning website and just press um, schedule on view which is on the computer, unless you want to go to an in-person testing site, which I would not recommend to anyone, unless you really just cannot take a test online for whatever reason. But I would personally do it online, that's what I did. And once you schedule your OnView Pearson test, you will have a date and a time. You have to log in to your test 30 to 45 minutes before the start. And I highly recommend actually following that. Don't try and log in like five minutes before the test starts because that's going to be a huge stress for you guys. I did that. I'm going to be completely transparent. I barely um, missed on my first exam. I had to take it twice. So I wasted a whole $99. These tests are expensive. You want to be able to pass first time kind of like a driving test. You don't want to be failing your driving test and have to pay all that money. And also keep all that info in your brain, uh, which is really annoying. You want to be able to exert yourself and get that test done. So I'm going to give you everything you need pretty much. Um, so that's the first thing, how to schedule the exam. Second thing is give yourself enough time to prepare for your exam. Do not rush into it. Like, section off a nice two weeks to study. Even for the basic MS-900, which is viewed as an easier exam, it is still something that you cannot just glide your way through. You need to really know a lot of the topics that I'm gonna talk about pretty much cold. And I'm not gonna talk about every single topic because that'll just take nine years, but I am going to go over what I remember right now. So the number one thing that you must know going into an MS-900 exam, the difference and distinction between SAS, PAS, and IAAS. The reason why I'm saying you must know this 
is because first of all, it is one of the biggest topics on the exam, and second of all, it's the easiest topic by far. So there's no point in messing this one up because this is where you can accumulate a huge amount of points. For those of you guys who don't know, you need 700 out of the 1,000 points to pass. I finished with a 777 on the dot, um, so that's a pretty good score in my opinion. And yeah, that was mainly because of my knowledge of IAS, PAS, and SAS. For those of you guys who don't know, SAS is Software as a Service, PAS is Platform as a Service, and IAS is Infrastructure as a Service. Um, the fundamental of these three things is that as you go from IAS to PAS to SAS, the um, customer gets less and less responsibility and more and more lies on the cloud service provider. So for something like Microsoft 365 itself, um, which is a software as a service, um, or an SAS, basically, um, basically everything that is required in a service is Microsoft's responsibility. So that goes from the applications to the data, to the web services, everything falls directly on Microsoft and you assume the least amount of responsibility possible. You being either the customer or the IT firm or whatever it may be in your individual case. Definitely, um, I'm gonna leave a lot of resources in the description that help me. There's one guy named John Seville on YouTube who is the absolute wizard of IT and like the uh, Microsoft search so definitely check him out but what was I saying so software as a service maintains the most responsibility to Microsoft then as you go down the list platform as a service service um, gives a little bit more responsibility to the customer or the IT firm that being applications and app data they are now responsible for apps. The CSP is now providing the apps. Um, so think something like the Microsoft Power Platform would be a PAS because it is a platform for making apps but doesn't include any apps within it. And then IAS gives the most responsibility to the consumer, the customer, or the IT firm because it provides the least. Um, so this could be something like a virtual network where there are no apps, no websites, no app, um, no data or anything of the sort. There's just a straight up machine that you have to use. And these are things like servers. Like a server would be an IAS because it has limited functionality. Um, I'm going to actually include a picture if I didn't already. I'm going to include a picture of what exactly I'm talking about because these questions are numerous even within the study, like the study um, practice questions. There are tons of questions pertaining to these type of things and it'll be something along the lines of you are the administrator of Microsoft 365 service, what is the correct label for this and then it'll be like uh, must maintain costs as well as reduce application fees or something like that. I'm going to put a picture up on the screen like I already said. And you guys should have a great idea of how to answer these questions going in. The next thing that you absolutely must know that I definitely was slacking off on doing studying because I just didn't know that it was such a big part of the exam is Microsoft Viva. Now, for those of you guys who don't know what Microsoft Viva is, it's basically a platform that is responsible for four different main modules within the Microsoft 365 systems. You've got Viva Learning, Viva Insights, Viva Connection, and Viva Topics. So, you guys are going to know, want to know what each one of those four is. You want to know that pretty much to the point where not like, you never have to write a definition, but you're, you're gonna have to pick out of a multiple choice 
question and answer which one of the three or which one of the four rather it is so it'll be like hub for centralized learning and then you'll have to be like people learning and it'll be stuff like that um definitely know that very well there isn't too much to that one it's relatively easy if you just do your studying i'd say it's one of the easier topics no pun intended but Definitely know those four. Know the Viva um, services cold. Know them well. Um, beyond that, it's just a lot of general prep and studying. So I would definitely brush up on the zero trust model. Um, stuff like least privilege access is when you want to ensure security for your organization. So you give only the least amount of access that is required for people to be able to do their jobs effectively. You don't want to overindulge in giving access and potentially um, bring an intruder onto the network who didn't even need to be brought on because you don't need to take those kind of risks within the IT space. So definitely know the zero trust model. Um, and beyond that, there's a, a bunch of other miscellaneous things like know what the applications do this is definitely one of the easier parts of the exam as well but you might just slack off on getting to know the terms like microsoft project microsoft planner know those very obscure applications and what they do because those could be the deciding factor between if you pass or fail a lot of what i got on the test was like these really weird um, Microsoft apps that I've never even heard of before um, and I ended up just guessing on a couple of them because it is down to common sense a lot of times it'll be like what is Microsoft graph is it a graphing tool is it like a, is it like a text editor and then you can obviously discern it just based on common sense but I would definitely say brush up on all your Microsoft apps as far as study guides and materials go, definitely the John Seville study cram would be my number one recommendation for anyone trying to pass a MS-900, SC-900, AZ-900, or anything of that sort of um, thing. But also there is the Microsoft Learning Module where you can like get to know the topics a little better. I personally didn't really use that much, if at all, because I didn't find it helpful. I prefer um, watching videos when I'm trying to learn something versus reading it. But that's just me. If you guys are more of readers, I would definitely say use Microsoft Learn then because that is pretty much exactly what's on the test. I'll leave a link for that down below. Um, beyond that, do a lot of review. I found three great reviewing things. Two of them were YouTube videos where the content creator just kind of scrolls through a bunch of questions. Make sure you know those cold. The other one is a program called TeachYourSeat.com where there are a free assortment of practice questions that you can go through. But make sure that you don't rely too heavily on that one because um, it does give you the same questions over and over. So. If your score is getting really, really good towards the end of you studying, doesn't necessarily mean that you know everything cold. You're just memorizing the questions that happened to me and I ended up screwing it up. So yeah, make sure that you are ready when you go into it. I already said that, but I'm talking more, uh, now I'm talking more from like a physical perspective. Don't like leave a big clutter on your desk because your proctor will make you like give you a tour of your room it's super annoying but you just kind of have to pass through that little background check and um make sure that you don't have your phone on you or anything like that well, otherwise you'll just end up wasting time so try and do all that physical prep before you check into the exam or during check-in not like five minutes before the exam begins um and yeah with that being said if you use everything I said in this video, you'll be good to go, like I already said. Um, thanks for watching. Hope you guys found this helpful. It is a bit of a different type of video than usual, but I figured 
I do have some valuable knowledge because I just now took the exam, which is not something that a lot of people probably have done recently because it's a very um, less talked about way to get ahead in the computer space. And yeah, with that being said, thanks so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you all later.